Hey everyone, it's uh, Hidage. Now here's another famous Shogi Games. Uh, well, it's been a long time. Uh, sorry about that. I've got uh, flu and uh, being busy with 81 Dojo. But uh, here it is, a uh, famous game again. And uh, this is a game that has been just played, actually. It was broadcast on TV yesterday, actually, uh, for uh, an NHK Cup tournament. And it is already categorized in famous shogi games because uh, we already know that this is going to be one of the most uh, exciting shogi games in the history. So uh, let's see that. Uh, this game was played between Yoshiharu Habu as black and uh, Yasumitsu Sato for white. So uh, I don't think I need to explain uh, who these guys are now. And uh, this game was played as uh, semifinals in NSC Cup tournament this year. So. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a great game, so let's see that. Okay, Habu is black, he played pawn 7f, uh, 3d, 2f, 5d, and yeah, so he's gonna get uh, go king and central rug here. And, uh, well, this is a very critical point, he played uh, pawn to 2, 2e, so uh, that's one option. So rook to 5b, okay, so for 4h, pawn 5e, uh, king 7, uh, king 6h, so uh, this square is protected with two pieces now. He can actually now then go ahead uh, when put pawn to 2d. So uh, he played bishop 3c. Okay, so king 7h, 6b, gold 5h, 7b. And uh, one of the famous and popular Josek is here is uh, pawn to 3f, uh, followed by silver to 3g, 4f, like that. But uh, here he played pawn to 6f. Uh, pretty interesting. So he's going for a slow game, uh, probably going for Anaguma. Okay, so white played uh, silver 4b, okay, bishop 8g going for Anaguma maybe, so 8b, 8h, uh, lance 9b, okay, Sato goes for Anaguma too, okay, go to 6g, uh, king 9a, lance 9h, silver 8b, king goes castle, uh, silver 5c, okay, now go to 7h, pawn to 4d. Uh, going for the bishop's head, maybe uh, the rook can go here, the silver can go here. Oh, but the silver can also uh, protect this uh, very nice vanguard pawn here too. Okay, so black played silver to 5i. So this silver is not going to attack anymore, He's gonna, uh, it's going to be part of the castle now. Uh, silver 60 going for bishop's head, uh, silver 6h, gold 7a. Okay, rook to 2f, showing the possibility of attack in this pawn. Okay, so bishop 4d. And if the rook goes back, uh, the bishop can go back, and it's going to be a uh, repetition. So uh, he played, okay, rook to 4f. Now, what he's basically trying to do here is uh, he he's going to sack the rook, and the f uh, it's followed by this bishop drop here. Uh, for the pieces, for example, but it's not going to do that right now. It's just uh, posing a threat here. Okay, so knight three c. The knight now runs from this bishop's diagonal in advance. Silver eight h, silver seven c backwards. So uh, he gave up attacking the bishop's head. Uh, he rather castles. Okay, nine f, ninety six c opening bishop's diagonal. Okay, knight to two e. Here, yeah. So he can take the pawn. Yeah, so he can win a pawn, but yeah, the knight will be uh, floating here, uh, maybe forever. So uh, it's still difficult. Now, silver to seven i uh, from the right. Okay, four piece castle. Uh, gold rook five a pawn eight f. Uh, maybe he's trying to uh, push the silver ahead. So pawn to eight d one f one d. Okay. Okay, 6f, bishop 6f. Okay, now what he's trying to do, he wants to exchange the pawns here uh, because he wants to drop it to here, okay? Okay, if he played gold to 5b, so he goes there, uh, pawn 70, uh, he doesn't take it. Uh, gold 7b because now the silver can advance, you know, uh, pawn 70, silver takes it, uh, it attacks this square. But you know, this pawn is floating too, right? So uh, bishop's 8d, okay, pawn, to eight, pawn 5f. Yeah, uh, maybe he should make this pawn sack at this timing uh, to make sure uh, the rook can go there any anytime later on. Okay, pawn to 8g. Yeah, cool, because 
uh, the pawn on 8d is gone, he can drop a pawn on the 8th file, and this uh, bishop's uh, ping the silver, so he can only take with the gold, and uh, Joseki says, uh, make your opponent's gold move diagonally forward. You know, uh, later on, it could be attacked with a knight, for example. Yeah, okay, uh, gold 7c, now he attacks the bishop. So, is this bishop uh, going back? Well, Habu made a very cool decision here, he just sacked the bishop. Now, Silver takes it. Okay, what is his plan? Uh, is he going for this knight? Well, one interesting uh, idea here is dropping a pawn to here. Uh, the reason is if you take it, I'm oh sorry, if you take it, uh, you can take you can take out the bishop. Uh, I can drop it here. Uh, I see. So uh, basically, uh, if you drop a pawn there, the silver will have to go back. But he didn't do that. Uh, look at his pawns in hand. He has four pawns because he, uh, white dropped a pawn on a g. Yeah, he goes for the edge. Nice. You know, because this silver has moved here, uh, the edge is pretty weak for white. And it was very uncomfortable for white to take it, so he played gold to 8b. So pawn takes. And then, yeah, there's been uh, this drop from earlier. Yeah. Bishop broken 3, because the rook cannot run, actually. Uh, it's gonna be taken, you see? So, uh, here's another cool move. Gold to 7g from the right. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, you know, it blocked the piece diagonal so the, now the rook can run, but he gave up the defense on 5f square. So, uh, basically what he's saying is, well, uh, you want to take the rook and drop it to here, attack him from the side, go ahead. Uh, your rook can also come here, go ahead, because I'm gonna attack from the king's head, right? So that's his idea. Okay, now white takes the rook, actually, okay, pawn recaptures, and rook to 2h, and uh, there's a strong gold drop on the 9c. Okay, he ignores it and takes the knight, now takes the lance. Okay, here's an interesting one, he didn't take it with the gold. Uh, you know, if he takes with the gold, uh, maybe a lance drop. But, yeah, he took with the king, because now if the lands drop, the king can run to here. So uh, that's the idea, but Habu overwhelms that idea. At this instant, he drops the pawn to 70, because now if the silver goes back, then lands drop. The, rook, the, the king cannot go to here, right? So this is a very interesting pawn drop. But uh, Sato has thought for pretty long here, uh, actually leading a very harsh attacking line. And he did that. Pawn drop in 7f. Well, you should, you know, you basically should uh, draw back, but then uh, what he's been reading is, for example, knight drop. Uh, it's one way to go. You take the silver, uh, knight promotes, and another knight drop, checking, uh, if you run, it's gold drop and checkmate, so you take it, take it, uh, something like that, so, uh, well, I don't know, let's uh, take it, for example, and it's a threat mate, so is white king a threat mate or not, so that kind of line is what they should be reading at this position with this pawn drop, uh, but how even went stronger. He just ignored the pawn drop and took the silver. Uh, the reason is, now white takes the gold, but yeah, black can ignore this and take the silver in the 7 suit because this is not a threat mate uh, on black's king. He takes the silver, for example, he can take it with the silver and it's fine. Uh, don't take it, oh, sorry. Uh, don't take it with the gold because uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a mate with a knight drop. <laughs> uh, anyway, anyway. And black's, uh, sorry, white's king is thread made actually, so uh, he had to recapture with the gold. Well, he didn't take the silver by checking because he might want to keep the uh, option of taking this gold uh, if he has the chance to. But now Habu just took the pawn with the knight. Yeah, this is knight. Uh, knight can maybe attack here. Okay, so gold to 7h, natural move, is a thread made. 
Okay, so Palm Promotion. Well, he made a decision here, actually. He didn't, didn't drop the lands to here. He just went ahead. So uh, Knight takes and he lands takes. Uh, king takes, you know, the king now has this escaping root. Okay, Knight to AE, dropping. Uh, you know, jumping the Knight may be uh, too dangerous because uh, this line. And also, look at this escaping root. So uh, he kept the Knight over there and dropped it. Uh, king to 8c, of course. No, actually, King to 9b. Okay, uh, we were stunned. Uh, how about uh, just dropped it? What, what if he just took it with took the gold? Uh, is this a threat mate? Uh, I don't know. Black has this escaping route. But anyway, uh, he dropped the silver. Uh, king runs silver drop. King runs. Is the king okay? Well, okay. He knows because the bishop is protecting here. But at this instance now, uh, instant uh, the king runs the nine h. Okay, now calmly, here's the land drop of 90, uh, attacking, checking, uh, blocking the king's escaping route. So, it seems uh, what has the win here, you know, the only option, well, let's drop a pawn and uh, block it, and the uh, lance is killed. No, at this instant, white can sack the dragon, uh, which is a threat made. Uh, if he takes it, uh, silver drop. Whoops, uh, it's a checkmate, right? And uh, what What if he takes it? Okay, I'm not clearly seeing the line yet, but, well, anyway, uh, he can make a brinkmate, actually. So, yeah, white seems to be winning here. So is it over? Uh, okay, let's see. So how about actually drop the pawn to 70? Yeah. So uh, he can only choose the, that line. Well, okay, let's see Habu's magic here. It was gold to 9f. Okay. So uh, what does he want? He wants this escaping route. Cool. Okay, now sing this move. Uh, okay. Sato. For Sato, well, it was kind of... Damn! Well, he didn't say that, uh, but I'm sure he said it in his mind. Oh, I hate house magic. Again? <laughs> okay, so, you know, if you take it, now the king runs. And all of a sudden, look at what these guys are doing here. He's gonna help the king to enter opponent's camp. So, uh, he couldn't take the gold now. What about now sacking the dragon over here? Uh, does it work? Uh, because uh, if the silver takes it, uh, silver drop, and if runs, gold drop, and uh, well, it's still checkmate, uh, so the dragon sack might work. No, uh, he can get rid of that bishop before taking the dragon, you know that. Gold drop. Uh, getting rid of that bishop. And, uh, well, take it or, uh, whatever. Uh, uh, now he has this escaping route. So, oh, sorry. So now he couldn't take the gold, and, uh, yeah, he moved the king over to 5b. Uh, okay, he's pretty angry now, I know. Okay, so black can now take the gold here. Uh, so he takes the gold, uh, king runs. Okay, now he should now save the rook. So uh, king to 4b and this rook is also attacking to uh, cover this rank. But uh, bishop 70 checking. And if pawn drop in 3c, the rook is blocked. So he uh, ran, but gold drop in 4. He attacking the bishop, uh, preparing to drop it to here. So uh, he had to drop a gold here. Lance drop. So... Uh, it's one side. It's like a one-sided game. Black is always attacking now. Okay, knight two b. Uh, Black is always attacking here. Uh, but is one gonna resign? No, uh, he's another stubborn guy. Okay, knight dropping two b. Okay, king nine f takes the lance. Great, but gold to seven f. But calmly, the bishop runs. Is he gonna resign now? No. Okay, knight promotes to. 3G attacking the lance, but 
uh, once that pawn is gone, black can drop a pawn. So uh, he picks the pawn, knight takes in a pawn drop. And yeah, white goes for the king entering too. King to 2d, he doesn't give up yet. Okay, but here's a very cool pawn drop to block the king's uh, escaping route. Yeah, well, white can take it, but the escaping route will be blocked anyway. Okay, he took the dragon. Uh, maybe here's a gold drop, but he didn't do that. He just took the knight. King runs, and he took the bishop now. Uh, pawn takes. Now, the reason he took the bishop, well, one thing, I see this fork, but before that, he makes another v very in good in between move attacking the rook indirectly because now if the rook takes this uh, look at this bishop's diagonal fork so uh, nice idea but he ran to 5d attacking this rank so actually a little bit uh, strange black has to uh, do something about it pawn push to 60 uh, blocking also uh, opening this bishop's diagonal for the drop, but uh, now dragon to uh, 2h. Okay, this attacks the dragon, oh, sorry, attacks the silver and uh, removes this threat, right? So, uh, bishop 6c forking, but at this instant, white has this chance of gold drop on 9d. Okay, now all of a sudden, once again, black's king looks pretty in danger, doesn't it? Okay, uh, white's attacking this, right? So, uh, it is pretty interesting again. Now, black took the rook first. Yeah, uh, don't run from a fork, that's the problem. Uh, he chose the rook. So, white can now uh, drop a pawn first. Uh, take with the bishop, of course. So, uh, white can take the bishop anytime and then uh, takes the uh, silver. But, uh, he makes this check. Okay, uh, he can block, but uh, it looks pretty dangerous. You know, uh, this bishop diagonal is uh, over here. So uh, he ran because uh, this escaping route is uh, available. And then he took the gold uh, b with the bishop. And the good point for black is that he's attacking the gold again. So uh, he could only take the bishop. That was his only idea, his only chance. So uh, maybe black can now uh, be safe again. Uh, dragon 8, 8h. Uh, but rook to 3d, a cool sacrifice. Uh, you know, uh, he can't take it. He knows that because once he do that, uh, he has to run this way, pawn drop, and whatever he does, uh, either way he goes, uh, this bishop second is all over. So uh, white runs, and he knows that. And gold to 5h. Uh, kind of threat mate. Okay. Uh, here's a pawn drop. Okay, don't take with the king. Uh, <laughs> this bishop's diagonal. Okay, I know he doesn't. Uh, he takes with the bishop. So uh, it would be good if he can now take, has this uh, chance to take this one. But uh, actually, that that seems to be still made. Uh, he could only drop a pawn to 5g. Uh, Closing that square, but uh, pawn drop on 4G, and seeing this move, uh, Sato finally resigned because uh, after this is a simple checkmate. For example, if he takes a gold drop, uh, runs, the gold can go ahead uh, because with bishop, uh, let's say he runs, and a gold drop. So it was a very, very, very exciting game that we watched on the TV. <laughs> well, it was amazing. And uh, I wish I could show you how the game was so exciting uh, when I when you see on the when you see on the TV. But uh, it's a pity that you guys can't watch Japanese TV. So anyway, uh, now Habu has uh, gone up to semifinals. Oh, sorry. Uh, in the beginning of the video, I I made a mistake. I said semifinals. No, it was quarterfinals. And uh, he will then go up to semifinals and play against Ryo Watanabe. So uh, we're gonna have an exciting game again soon. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.